Okay, so now we have leaves. We have everything we need and Spider Girl is here. I know y'all asked for her. She couldn't get the mask on over her puffs. So, but she is here as Spider Girl and she's actually helping today. I am surprised in the suit. She said, I'm helping in the suit. All right, so we are going to get into composting in a small space, in an urban space in your backyard. All right, so let's talk really quick about building a compost pile. So I know that if you have thought about building a compost pile, you've probably gone out online and you've read everything there is to know or very close to that on what you need to start a compost pile. Um, so it's very simple. I don't get very technical. I don't get very in depth. I did take a few notes. So if you see me do that, I'm turning my laptop back on. Um, so just so that I don't forget anything um, because I'm just talking. Um, so basically the four things you need is you need browns. Those are your carbons. Um, you need greens, that's your nitrogen, and you need air and you need water. And so let's talk about what things are browns. Um, so the carbons are dried leaves. So leaves can be a green or they can be a brown. Um, so if they are dry, that's gonna be a carbon. If they are green, that's gonna be a nitrogen. Cardboard, paper, paper towels, napkins, coffee filters, sticks, wood chips. That's all a brown, that's a carbon. That's what's going to pull in the nitrogen so that you don't get like slushy compost or you don't have um, stinky compost. <laughs> so if you have more nitrogen than you have carbon or not a even mix of nitrogen and carbon, um, that's when your compost could start to smell um, and it could go anaerobic as well. Uh, anaerobic means that it starts to kind of just be mushy and stuck together and things like that. Um, same thing can happen if you don't have enough air. Um, and so when we talk about air, that just means if you're turning your pile. Now I told you last week, <laughs> I don't turn my pile that often, um, but I do make sure that I, I have an even amount or a, a balanced amount of greens and browns. So if I notice that my uh, compost pile is too wet, then I'll add more browns. If I notice that it's too dry, I'll do one of two things. I'll water it because that's one way to make something not dry. Um, but then if I notice it's not composting, I'll um, add some more greens. So the nitrogen is what's gonna help your compost pile warm up you can compost uh, heated compost or you can compost cold um, either way it's going to eventually compost hot compost is going to break down much quicker than um, a cold compost but it will all break down <laughs> so another thing if you are in a small space composting I have a two bin system you don't have to have a two bin system I started in a tote just a plastic tote that you get from the dollar store or that you get from like Walmart or, you know, big box store, Home Depot, Lowe's. And you can do like a lasagna method. And I'm gonna show you what I mean by lasagna method. So basically you can just layer. So you can layer carbon, you can layer nitrogen, and then another layer of carbon and just keep going to fill your bin. And then you can turn your bin as the season goes. Um, I moved away from that because I expanded my garden and so that was not enough compost for me. But 
There is nothing wrong with buying compost from the store. I'm just choosing to make this much compost, just like I choose to start my plants. But if they don't work out, I will go all the way to the store and just buy some starts. You have something to say? What? So uh, the buck, the, the the thing she started composting it is like over it's there. Oh. <laughs> But it's over there and there's also potatoes growing in it now. Too. Yeah, so I told you all that my old compost pal keeps uh, growing volunteer potatoes. And so that's what I'm saying. Like, if that soil and that tote wasn't good, those potatoes would not grow. And so don't downplay or discard or think negatively about composting in a smaller space or in a container because it can be done and the compost is just as good. We're gonna go ahead and get started. So we're gonna move over by the compost pile. It's not a lot of space over there. I was trying to figure out how I was gonna record this over there so it wouldn't be just me standing there talking but we about to see. <laughs> so last week I told you what my setup looks like. So it's six T post. Um, there's chicken wire in the middle right here. The outside of it is fencing. So all the way around is fencing with six mil plastic around it. And then what I had around the house to separate the two bins was chicken wire. And so that's all I'm doing in this little space uh, to make a compost pile. Now let's get to building the compost pile. So what you saw me bring in was grass clippings. I'm sure they've dried by now. Um, coffee grinds, I got them from Starbucks. Coffee grinds are green. And so I'll be putting that in the middle of the pile so that it can warm up the core of the pile. Um, I also brought back some leaves. You saw me rake those. You're gonna want to have a um, water hose near you because if you're gonna use the lasagna method, or you know, really any method. If you're just gonna throw this stuff in here, it's still gonna need to be watered at each level so that you can make sure the pile is, is moist. So I'm gonna start with leaves at the bottom and I'm simply going to pour these leaves in the bottom of this. I'm only gonna use the middle right now because I want it to be a pile so it can start to warm itself up. Um, and the smaller your area, it, it, it is, better chance that it will warm up because all of the material is right there together. If that makes sense the way that I just said it. I'm just gonna pour the leaves in there. The other thing, not all of the leaves. I have the leaves in a pile right here. Now I'm gonna take my coffee grinds and layer them right here. And then I'm going to wet this up. Also, if you cut the leaves up with like the lawnmower, this process will happen much faster. I don't do that because again, I just don't do it, it's extra work. <laughs> Y'all already knew the answer to that. I don't do it because it's extra work, but it will uh, compost faster if you cut the leaves up. And so this is the coffee grinds. I'm not going to open this bag right here, but remember I was telling you they come from Starbucks? You can get the small bags, the little silver bags, but if you walk in and say, do you have coffee grinds? They will give you the coffee grinds, all of them <laughs> that they have in that moment. But because I'm gonna layer it and I don't want it all to go in here at one time, I'm gonna grab like a shovel or something and throw the coffee grinds on here. Oh, uh, <laughs> that's my oldest y'all. He's 19. Can you say hello? He came What's to give up? her a hug. <laughs> What's your YouTube channel? Kale Myers. Kale Myers. K-E-L-L-M-Y-E-R-S. He does gaming, so y'all can check him out too. I was supposed to help him with something last night, but he said he got it. So I fell asleep so early last night, y'all. Anyway, I'm sorry. I can get real thrown off. <laughs> All right, so that's the coffee grinds. So we're just gonna throw them in there on top of the leaves. And I don't break them up from where they were in the coffee maker. Now that's coffee grinds. I have a little bit of green grass still left from a friend who saved his grass for me. So I'm gonna grow, throw a little bit of that in there. 
So if someone offers to save grass for you or yard waste, that includes leaves, just make sure that they don't spray their grass because if they do, those chemicals that's in that grass is gonna be in your compost pile. And if it's there to kill bugs and weeds and things like that, it's gonna do the same thing in your garden. I'm gonna wet this portion really quick with the water hose and then I'm just gonna do it all over again. Probably gonna put you on a time lapse because no one wants to see me continue to explain the same thing over and over. <laughs> So I hear someone talking to my mom. She's just like, there's so much going on out here this morning. She's like, open the door for me. I don't have my key. My daughter says, did you walk here? Yeah, I left my car. What is happening? <laughs> Back to the compost. <laughs> By the way, that big thick pile of stuff that I took the uh, pitchfork and broke up, that's what anaerobic looks like. So that was grass that has been sitting in that bag for I don't know how long um, and it started to break down, but it was too wet. So that's what anaerobic looks like, but mixing it in with the browns and also having the compost pile start to heat up, um, it should not be a problem with me putting that in there. I have probably three more bags full of grass that looks just like that, but I will put a lot of leaves in here to help it. So that's kind of the gist of it. Um, and as I continue to work on this pile, I will get more leaves and I will make sure that the pile is pretty much in the middle of this section so that it can warm up. Um, and as it warms up, it will start to break down. One thing I will say is in the front of your compost pile, don't make it all the way up don't make it the height that i have mine <laughs> either make it uh shorter or make it movable and i can do that and i probably will do that i just haven't gotten around to it because it would be much easier for me to get that stuff over in that pile um without it there also another thing completely forgot um to put the kitchen scraps in here and so you can add kitchen scraps all the way you know through the season so you can just dig a hole i don't need to dig a hole because my pile is not finished. But you can dig a hole in the middle of your pile, in the side of your pile. You can keep adding your kitchen scraps to it throughout the season um, and it will continue to break down. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, get some of the chicken bedding and manure out there and I'll throw that in there as well. But I need a lot more uh, leaves. So I always end my pile with leaves because leaves and carbon, so leaves and carbons, is what's gonna hold the smell in. I never end my pile with a uh, with a green, always with the carbon to keep my smell down. All right, so the pile is pretty much built. It smells pretty bad right now, <laughs> but I'm gonna throw this carbon over it, which is just the leaves. I also had a bunch of uh, like scraps that I hadn't put in here and they were just kind of sitting out here. That's where the smell is coming from. But the carbon, like I just said, will keep the smell in. I'm gonna go ahead and water it. One last time. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I will make sure that I answer them soon. I won't say today, but soon. Um, today is me and my daughter were going out to do stuff. Um, if you have any questions though, put them in the comments below. If you have any tips, put them in the comments below because just because this is how I do it, doesn't mean it's the only way that it can be done. Doesn't mean it's the best way that can be done, but it is the way that works for me. So I hope everyone, so I hope everyone has a wonderful weekend. Um, I hope that this video was helpful. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to press like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to visit me over on Instagram at Miss MS Asia Spratley, where I post about the things going on in the garden every day. Bye.